we've talked about how U substitution undoes the chain rule. Integration by parts, what that's going to do is let us undo the product rule. When I talk about the chain rule and product rule, I'm talking about our derivative rules. Now that we're integrating, we need to undo those. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, let's have a function h of x, and let's let that equal f of x times g of x. If I took the derivative of h of x, I would, by the product rule, get f prime of x times g of x plus g prime of x times f of x. Let's do something strange. Let's integrate both sides. So if I integrate h prime of x, I've got that, and then I'm going to have the integral of g of x f prime of x dx and the integral of f of x g prime of x dx. Notice I swap the order. I put the derivative second um, in the product for both of those terms. All right, well, the integral of h prime of x dx, well, an integral of a derivative is just the function. So that's just simply equal to h of x. The rest is the same. I can rewrite h of x as f of x times g of x, because that's how we've defined it. And I'm going to solve for the integral of f of x times g prime of x dx. When I do that, I get this. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is let u equal f of x and g, well, I'm going to have that equal v. Once I do that, once I do my substitution, I find that the integral of u dv equals u times v minus the integral of v du. Okay, so I've just shown that we can do this, but why would we want to? All right, let's talk about this. We're going to do a simple example. The integral of x times s sine of x dx. We could not have done this before. This does not work with u substitution. If I let u equal sine x, then the derivative would be cosine x, and that's not there. So there's nothing we could have done to solve this. It's unfortunate that we've picked u and v for integration by parts when we also use u for u substitution, and u's and v's also look a lot alike, but we're going to do the best we can. So I'm going to tell you, and I'm not going to tell you why, but this will work if we let u equal sine of x and v equal, I'm sorry, not v, we want this to be dv equals x times d of x. If we do that, we find that this is equal to the u, and these two pieces together give me the dv. I'm setting this up a little bit differently than the textbook does off on the side. I like having my du's and dv's lined up and my u's and my v's lined up. I think what the textbook does is usually u and then dv. I, I, for me, I find it easier to have it organized like this. Okay, so if I have u of x equals sine x, du, that is the derivative of that, is going to be cosine x times dx. Why? Because of that annoying chain rule. Um, if we have an x inside, we're going to, when we do the derivative of sine x, we're also going to take the derivative of x. Okay, with the dv, what I'm going to have to do is kind of undo that. So if I'm going to undo that, I'm going to integrate that. So when we integrate the dv, I'm going to get 1 half x squared. All right, so let's see if this is going to help us. Um, this is going to be, again, we're going to say u dv equals u times v minus v du. So we've got sine x times x dx equals u times v. I'm going to go across first. So this is going to be 1 half sine x times x squared minus the integral, and now we're going to go this way, 1 half x squared cosine x dx. Well, that doesn't look any better, does it? Well, the reason why it doesn't look any better is I happen to pick the incorrect v in u. Um, I almost redid the video because I honestly did this by accident, but I think it's actually pretty perfect doing this incorrectly because you can see that instead of getting the problem better, I'm making it worse. Instead of an x, now I have an x squared. Okay, so this, this is not going to work. So let's, let's try this. Let's let 
this be the U, and this be the DV. So let's see what happens. DV is equal to sine x dx. Okay, so DU, well, the derivative of x is just 1, so 1 times dx. I'm going to integrate the sine x dx, and I'm going to get negative cosine x, and that's equal to my v. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in what I have now, saying, okay, x sine x dx is equal to, again, we're going across here, or sometimes I like to think of it this way, and that's going to be negative cosine x times x minus the integral, and now we're going to go diagonally, and we're going to have negative cosine x dx. That I can do. I can take the, the integral of cosine x dx. That's just equal to, well, let me go ahead and put all of this here, plus the integral of cosine of x dx is simply sine x, and then of course we're going to have a plus c at the end of this. So now we can find out ways of integrating things that u substitution doesn't work for. The reason why my first method didn't work is I picked the wrong u. What you want to usually do is have that u become, when I take its derivative, it gets easier, it gets smaller, it goes from x to 1 dx. So those are the things you're looking for when you're trying to figure out what should I call my u. So how do you figure out what to make the u equal to? Well, I like the um, mnemonic um, lipid, the one on the bottom. The textbook and some of my colleagues like Liate, I don't even know how to pronounce that, but they're really, they both will work. The L stands for logs. So you're going to let the logarithms be the u first. So what you do is you go from left to right. Um, so first of all, you do logs. If there's any logs, that's the u. What does the i stand for? Inverse trig in both cases. Um, a stands for algebra, which I think is silly because all of this is we're using algebra for a lot of this. What I like is the P stands for polynomial. They mean the exact same thing. I think the polynomial is actually an easier way of thinking about what it is that we're setting up for you. So that's why the X, which is a polynomial, goes, that went first. We had no logs in that example. We had no inverse trig, but we did have a polynomial. Then we have trig and exponents or exponentials. Notice they're backwards. It's because it doesn't actually matter which one you do first. Um, e to the stuff actually can be, you can write trig in terms of e to the stuff, so it doesn't matter which one comes first in this case. So logs, inverse trig, whether you'd like to call it a polynomial or algebra, and then either trig or exponentials come next. And that's why we let u equal the u in our example, because the cosine was or the sign was a trig function, that's why it got the dv.